So the second part of the strategy um, is around uh, helicopter transportation uh, and all things helicopters really. And we in the early days established through a lot of hard work with the helicopter operators, uh, ourselves, step change and, and the uh, uh, duty holders around a what's known as category A, B, C and D flights. And the category A is, is the standard crew change with category D being uh, life threatening search and rescue. Uh, the category C is for uh, those who are suspected uh, of having COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, and then we introduced a category B primarily to uh, protect the, uh, the air crews. Um, so if you're designated as a category B passenger, you may find yourself in a helicopter that's got fewer people on, uh, on board. And that's how we distinguished uh, between the, the categories. And the category C typically makes use of the CMED flight. Uh, because the general guidance is to try and get those individuals off the insulation uh, as soon as possible. And then we've had a lot of conversations around uh, face coverings. Uh, should it be face masks? Should it be um, a snood? Um, and we've pushed hard uh, and got sort of agreement with the helicopter operators, with the Civil Aviation Authority, uh, with uh, a number of, uh, of operators testing it with them as well. Uh, we've got a sort of general agreement around uh, wearing a, a snood. Uh, and the reason for that over a mask, you know, there's some good, good reasons and we've tested the snood as well. So uh, New Tech uh, helped us out uh, and we've just used the snood in terms of making sure that there's no conflict with the emergency breathing system. Uh, and we felt that was far better than if it was a mask that was tied around the back of your, your head, whereas the snood is just quickly pulled off. Um, the CEA were keen that it was seen as comfortable and we thought the snood was a lot more comfortable and they were concerned about communications, being able to take the thing off and talk to the uh, the pilots and put it back on. They didn't feel that the masks uh, aid that, uh, aided that. Uh, and then I think the helicopter operators were really concerned about what's known as FOD, which is Foreign Object Debris uh, Damage and Risk. Uh, and they felt that if you were wearing face masks and particularly the ones that just hook around your ears, you would go off onto the heli deck, there was a strong chance of these fast uh, masks being sucked off and, and taken into the, uh, the, uh, the engines uh, with uh, all the problems that that would uh, provide, whereas the snood stays, uh, stays with you. So as I said, we've tested it. We know that it's safe to, uh, to use. Um, the snood has a, a degree of, of, of medical uh, properties about it. But let's be very clear here, and that's why we want everyone to wear the, the snood, um, and just the same with the mask, they don't stop you uh, getting COVID-19. So if you were wearing just a, a simple fluid resistant mask and someone was to cough all over you uh, and they had COVID-19, then you're at clear risk. And likewise, even with a snood, what these do, whether it's a face mask or a snood, but that's focused on the snood, what they do is they prevent and they contain, if you like, any coughs and sneezes. So that if everyone on the helicopter is, uh, is wearing a, a snood, uh, then you're going to prevent the uh, the, the transmission uh, if the uh, individuals uh, uh, have got those uh, advanced uh, symptoms. So that's the uh, the, the face coverings. Uh, I think I'm right in saying that uh, Survive Tech, which will be issuing these, they'll be managing the uh, the process for us. They should be issued with your uh, your survival suit. Uh, it will be a there and back, so you can wear the uh, the snood uh, in the hel helicopter uh, going to the installation. And then uh, you to take that off and keep it, and then you're to wear the uh, the snood when you're coming back from the insulation to the uh, the heliport. And there you'll have a couple of choices. The main choice will be to uh, to dispose of it. Um, so there are one-off use if you like, but you you can. I mean, there's uh, if you listen to the manufacturer, they talk about the ability to wash it, but it's hand wash only. Um, so if you want to sort of wear it uh, as you leave the heliport then you're going to be allowed to do that. Uh, but that's your own choice and that's nothing to do with uh, the key reason why we've got it, which is for the uh, the use on the helicopter. So that's the uh, the face coverings. And I think you know, we should be able to see those uh, starting to get in place over the next uh, next couple of, uh, of weeks. And I think that's a, a great example of industry uh, trying to be consistent. So it's addressing these issues that we hear time and time again that we're not seeing consistency. Uh, but this is uh, the way we could uh, we could do it. And, and another important uh, point to make, and I know the helicopter operators are, are keen that we raise this as well, uh, because they can do whatever the clients want, uh, but the decision, 
to minimize uh, people on board a, a helicopter is still down to the, the, the client. Um, so it's not the helicopter operator's uh, decision. Uh, but one thing I can, now, uh, I can now say, and this is some advice from uh, IOGP, which is the International Offshore Gas uh, Producers, Oil and Gas Producers, and uh, in collaboration with worldwide uh, health groups, uh, that are members of theirs and the uh, the worldwide aviation group what they have said is that you know, when you're combining the use of face coverings with the likes of temperature check with the likes of questionnaire it's questioned whether the distances that can be achieved in the helicopter will provide any additional benefit and i think that also goes to support health protection scotland's view that those people that are demonstrated to be asymptomatic i.e that they haven't got symptoms and they've passed a temperature check um, they are at very low risk uh, of transmitting the uh, the virus if they uh, had that. So uh, in terms of social distancing, uh, I would uh, suggest that that becomes less of an issue provided everyone is using their snoods and that they have had a temperature check and honestly answered the, uh, the, the questionnaire. So that's around the, uh, uh, the face coverings. And the final part of the, the jigsaw in, under helicopter transport is heliport arrangements. And I think there we've heard some feedback from uh, the workforce about lack of social distancing um, and what can we do to improve that. And I think part of that is to do with it's taken time. You know, it, this is a dynamic situation. It changes nearly every day that something else crops up. Um, and helicopter operators have tried to, uh, to, to be uh, in front of the curve, if you like. So. Uh, I have been in receipt, you know, I've asked, spoken to all the helicopter operators. I'm in receipt of all their uh, published standards uh, for arranging of, uh, of heliports. I think all of them are talking about removing seats in heliports, uh, making sure that cleaning is, uh, is carried out, trying to keep social distancing. Same thing that you'd see if you went to Tesco and you've got to be two meters apart. So all these things they're trying to, uh, to get in place. And I think, again, over the coming days and the week, uh, we should start to see a more systematic approach to how heliports uh, are arranged.